Hey guys, so today is officially the release of peace and turmoil, which is very, very, very exciting. And I told you all that I would be doing a release day Q and A. So that's what I'm here to do. A fair amount of these questions are writing related, but some of them are kind of random or they're a fun kind of question. And I'm gonna start with one that I think is a fantastic question. It says, if your protagonist had a dinner party where each of them had to bring a dish, what would each of them bring? I love that question, so thank you for asking that. And I'm just gonna go with the four, what I consider main characters in the story, which would be Dietrich, Guinevere, Zodia, and Roland. And I think Guinevere would bring elk because she loves elk. Roland would bring elk also because Roland loves Guinevere, so he wants to, of course, please her, but he'll also bring some alcohol because he likes himself a drink. So Dia would probably bring something vegan or vegetarian. And then Dietrich would find somebody else's dish at the dinner party that he thought looked really good. And then he would steal it. And then he'd be like, look everybody, look what I brought. The next question is, if you didn't write books, what would you see yourself doing? And I don't know if you mean maybe career wise or if you just mean in my spare time, uh, Career-wise, if that's your question, I would just continue doing what I do, but I would do even more of it. So I'm a private violin teacher, I would probably do a lot more with that. And if I, if you're referring to just for fun in my spare time, I would probably try to work on my art skills. I would definitely read way more and I would definitely play a lot more video games. Next question says, if you were forced to Marie Kondo your bookshelf, which books would you keep? And I know that this sounds so stupid because I can't read them, but I would probably keep my foreign editions of Witcher and Mistborn because they were really difficult for me to get. The next question says, what is the weirdest book you've ever read? And I really love this question and I immediately thought of these books. I don't know how I've never mentioned these on my channel. Maybe I've mentioned them once a long time ago, but the Wayside School books, they're, they're for kids, but they are so bizarre. And if you've never read them, you should check them out because they're hilarious. I feel really bad because I cannot answer this next question. It says, sort the main characters into Hogwarts houses. And I don't know because I'm not really a Harry Potter fan. So for those of you who have read the book already, can you sort them and then let me know? <laughs> because I'm actually very curious. Next question says, can you review Malazan Book of the Fallen? It would be nice to hear your perspective on it. And I, would love to read Malazan. Malazan? I'm never really sure, sorry. I would love to read those, but they just seem like such an endeavor. Reading those books just seems like so much, and I want to get into them, but I just don't know if I have the time right now. Maybe in years to come. The next question is, if approached to do so, would you adapt your book into a show, a movie, or a game? Pick one. Darn it. That's a great question. I think I would have to say show. I would love a video game adaptation. I actually think video games are one of the best ways to portray a story if done really well. But because my story is multiple point of view, I think a show would be the best way to do it. A movie just wouldn't be enough time. So a TV show. Next question says, are there any books you've read that you liked the movie or TV show better or vice versa? And I I don't know. Next question says, are you currently working on anything else? I'm assuming this is referring to writing. And yes, I am currently working on book two of the Dark Shores series. And I have another series that I want to start uh, really kind of diving into even more. I've written part one of the first book that will likely be a trilogy in that series. I've mentioned it very, very, very subtly here and there, but it is so cool. The next question is, how long is my hair? Uh, my hair is that long, so there you go. The next question is, is there going to be romance in this book? And in the first book, there are people who are motivated by romantic feelings that they have, but I wouldn't really say that there's romance. Were there any things you really struggled with when writing your book? Uh, yes, I was pretty terrible at writing a story. I mean, so many of us have written academic papers before and it's obviously quite different to write a book. So I struggled a lot with trying to just do that and figure out the best way 
to start the story, I restarted the book so many times. The next question says, I suffer from anxiety, so I am constantly second guessing myself in an attempt to make sure everyone is happy. What was it that made you decide this is it, it's ready when editing your book? And before I answer that, I do wanna say that I don't suffer from anxiety, so I can't relate in that way. But while I know it's not the same thing, I do definitely have imposter syndrome and I constantly think that everybody else who does what I do is better than me and that I'm a fraud. And a lot of people have that feeling and that's totally normal and that is completely okay. Nobody starts off perfect and nobody really ends up perfect either. I'm a huge fan of Sanderson. I think Sanderson writes the most amazing stories and amazing characters. And then there are people that think that Sanderson sucks. So even the people that you think are the most amazing, there are people that don't really care for them either. So don't ever worry about trying to make everybody happy. Try to tell the story that you have in your mind. Try to tell it to the best of your abilities. Do everything you can to research writing and make your writing better, make your weaknesses your strengths. Do all of that stuff and just always strive to work hard and be better and get better and you will get better. And when you no longer feel that there is anything that you can really do to drastically change the story, that I think is when you know, okay, that that's it for this one. It doesn't mean that you're going to publish it necessarily, but that's when you know you're ready to move on to something else. That of course is a more serious question though. So my answer might not be the most helpful to some people. So if you have anything that you want to add to this particular question, feel free to do that in the comment section. There was another kind of similar question about how to handle your inner critic. And similar to a lot of what I was just saying, you are often going to be your own harshest critic. And I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. I think that it's good for you to always want to be better. I don't think that that is something you should try to shut down. What you should try to shut down is when that voice tells you you should quit or when that voice tells you that nobody's gonna like your story or that you suck or anything like that. Anytime that the voice is telling you something that conflicts with your dreams or what you write for, that's when you need to ignore that. So I think the best way to handle your inner critic is to separate when it's being helpful and when it's being really unhelpful. The next question says, why did you choose to self-publish? And I've done a whole video about this and I've also answered this a little bit in a couple of interviews that I've done that I'll link down below if you're interested in seeing them. But the biggest reason is because of the control and freedom that you have with self-publishing. Next person asks, I'd love to hear your thoughts on the marketing process. And I'll probably be doing quite a few videos on my channel dealing with marketing and writing and the steps to self-publish, things like that. So I'll go into more detail later, but a lot of the marketing for me was just trying to have fun with, with talking about my book. I'm very aware though that that probably wasn't really particularly helpful. So like I said, I will be doing a video all about that in the future. The next question says, what do you think it takes to bring a book from good to great when it comes to writing? And when it comes to writing, Specifically, I don't know if there is something that I can pinpoint. I think that writing itself is so subjective, writing styles. But for me personally, when it comes to storytelling, I think the characters are what really, really matter most to me and in some ways the themes as well. The next question says, how many hours per day roughly do you write for? And I don't think I could even give a rough estimate when I sit down to write. I will write for hours. I rarely just sit down and write for 10, 15 minutes or anything like that. And I don't write every single day. So when I do sit down to write, it's for a very long time. The next question says, did you publish your book with Ingram Spark? If so, how was your experience with them? And I will do an entire video talking about Ingram Spark. The next question says, how many drafts did you do? What was the word count on draft one versus the final? And how do you plan your book? And I don't know how many drafts I did, but I can tell you that the word count when I first sent the book to get professionally edited was 190,000-ish words, and the completed book was around 160,000, so I definitely cut a lot. When it comes to planning, I usually will sit down and write out the plot lines for individual characters. I write that stuff out first, and then I try to figure out how 
that ties in with the timeline for other characters and then I try to coordinate that and I put it up on the Scrivener bulletin board and then I start writing. The next question is on a similar topic. It says, what about your editing process? How do you deal with additions and subtractions of the original draft? So anytime I cut stuff, what I'll do is I often highlight that and I save it in a separate document and then I delete it in the main document. And if I find that the main document reads better without it, then I don't put it back in. Uh, as far as the editing process, I just, uh, that's kind of difficult. I just go through and try to figure out what doesn't read well, what doesn't feel true to the character, what dialogue seems clunky. I don't, I don't have like specifics necessarily. I just, all of the specifics are what I'm looking for when I start reworking it. And I will usually rework chapters and often I will look at a chapter and then the next time I see that character, I will try to kind of go from one to the next that way. And then I can see, okay, well, did something kind of significant happen in this chapter? Is the character still thinking about it in this one? Or is it suddenly as if it didn't happen? That kind of stuff is what I'm usually looking for when I'm editing. Next question is, why did you decide to do adult fantasy and not young adult? And the biggest reason was some of the themes that I really wanted to explore were I think better suited for adult fantasy than young adults. The next question is when to pick a title name and for me the title name came very late kind of. The next question is which phase was your favorite and least favorite? So I actually really really enjoy writing so I would say just writing the story is so fun for me but this whole last chunk has been filled with a lot of unknowns for me and I do not like, I don't like that. The next question is how does one first go about self-publishing since traditionally publishing you just send your work to publishers and I've done a video comparing traditionally publishing to self-publishing but I will be doing more videos in the future talking about all the steps. Anyway, that is it for the release day Q&A. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you, of course, as always, for your support. Check out the Communities tab. I will have the first giveaway winner listed there, so see if it's you. But anyway, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you all later. Bye.